It's time-based media. You're looking at a moment of time of something that was really different before that moment and will potentially be really different after that moment. You're really getting a window sort of frozen of something that, that literally can run infinitely and will change infinitely. Welcome to Zero Space. We're uh, here in Brooklyn. We've got a 50,000 square foot sort of digital playground. I've been an artist since I was 12, but primarily a digital artist for the past 26 years, since about 1994, 1995, using computers to make art. I'm the old guy. <laughs> Over here, we've got an LED uh, XR stage, and we're playing some of the animations for the show. Back in 94, um, I went to a school out here called Pratt for painting, actually. I was offered a job in the publications department at Pratt to help build their website. During the day, I was um, doing traditional analog art. And then at nighttime, I was kind of self-teaching myself programming and digital art and using computers. And I kind of knew at that point that um, I was going to stop using paint and brushes and I was exclusively going to use uh, computers to make art. 50,000 square foot of space to really run any kind of art installation, any kind of event, any kind of show. So it's like a, a huge nerd playground for, for a guy like me. You know, I've done projects for heavy metal band Tool, a project that I did for Sean Combs. You know, we were nominated for an MTV Music Award, uh, Pepsi Super Bowl concerts, Taylor Swift to Snoop Dogg, Black Eyed Peas, <laughs> right? So I've had some really, you know, great, great sort of moments over the past 26 years. Over here, we're doing uh, motion capture. So if you want to come on and put on a uh, skin tight uh, suit with a sword, you can make that happen. Yeah, so in terms of like my, my current NFT catalog, I've mostly uh, just been on Super Rare, you know, just kind of doing one of ones. For Super Rare, you know, I've only been, been showcasing this piece of software called The Void, which I've been working on now for six to eight years. It's like maybe nine or 10,000 lines of code at this point. To, just to break down the structure of the drop, um, it's uh, 12 unique one of ones. They are one minute and four seconds paired with this audio by Kurt Yunela. So there are 12 NFTs that are paired with 12 physical canvases. The canvas is that uh, program run tens of thousands of times to find that kind of one still that I think looks cool. And then I'm hand painting on top of that. The opening is, is February 16th at Seasons Gallery in downtown Los Angeles. Big space and we played around for a long time with uh, placement. You know, we were in the middle, we had a module in the middle, we tried on the walls, we tried all, the, all of the different things, but I think what we've got rolling is, I know, it feels like four separate shows. You know, you've got banks of TVs, banks of monitors, banks of art, and everything's speaking to each other. So I think there's lots of different experiences inside here. Ton of code, mm -hmm. there it all is. Look at that beautiful. It is not an auction style. So the pieces are, are $12,000 and you get the NFT and the canvas. Whatever doesn't sell ahead of the public, um, Legend will drop on uh, February 17th. So on February 17th, whatever didn't sell privately um, will be available. And it's just a one time, like a one and done, no, no auction. We're trying to get to these people who, this might be their first NFT that they've ever bought, right? They're, they're, they're used to a traditional gallery. They're used to traditional canvases. They're still getting the traditional canvas, but they're also getting this NFT. And so the idea of, 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 of a collector walking in from the traditional arts back saying like, oh, I want this canvas. Okay, cool, auction started. You have to wait 24 hours it is not the right uh, mechanic for this particular drop. See the real algorithm running in that room in real time, which is Java. And then here you're seeing sort of the, the canvas frozen and then you're, you're seeing what it's captured from. It's, it's an opportunity for you to see sort of the duality between analog and digital, and digital and physical and physical and digital. Or what are kind of the creative boundaries and processes for making this work? And you know, it's taken me six or eight years to kind of get the code to this point, but they're literally like individual building blocks. One building block, its job is just to do color. Um, you, you'll tell me what the color palettes are, and then you'll tell me what I should color and then I'll do it for you. 
And so I say, well, okay, there are nine different color palettes and you can, you have the choice to, to pick which palette you want to use. But I uh, just want to let you know that there's probability. So you're going to pick a random number. And if that random number is a number between zero and 100, well, if you pick zero, one, two, three, or four, then you can pick this color palette. And so that one's rarer than than this one, which maybe has like a 70% chance of getting drawn. But I'm providing like what the, the paints are, what the crayons are. So I know that certain colors are going to occur because I'm limiting the color palette that it can choose from. I use a lot of what's called modulo and it's modulo is like how to basically do something based on a tempo. And so there's a tempo on this that switches between a kaleidoscope shader and, and, and the regular piece. And in this case, the, the kaleidoscope or the mandalas is, is in three reflections. So that's why you see a, a triangle. I've got one building block that just says, I can listen to audio. Its job is just to listen to audio coming in. And then I can tell that thing, hey, uh, change you know, the position of this based on the bass or, or, or the snare or the high tweets. And then I start to get into the realm of shaders. And so I've got a shader that melts things. I've got a shader that tears things apart. I've got a shader that glitches things. I have a shader that turns things into kaleidoscopes. I've got shaders that will slowly paint and then fade the canvas. There are all these kind of different building blocks that are, are, are told how to treat the, the final composition. And again, because they're all sort of separate blocks, I can kind of mix and match them. But what is it like watching everything come to life? You know, and that's kind of the funny part is, is, is that I've got to sort of wear all these different hats. I've got to be the programmer that programs the environment to, to make sure that everything works algorithmically. I also have to be the designer to make sure that the, the colors are working well and the shapes are working well. And then all of a sudden there becomes this point where I then have to become the critic. Like I literally have to sit there and say, you know, is this good or is this not good? And watch it evolve and say, is this evolution interesting or not interesting? Well, if that evolution is interesting, you know, save that so it does more of that. I'll then spend weeks just watching it, like sitting in my studio, <laughs> like with a coffee, just like living with the work, right? Waiting for that sort of beautiful accident to happen. You're looking at a moment of time of something that was really different before that moment and will potentially be really different after that moment. Because I've been in this space of digital art for so long, um, it's always been about cataloging. It's always been about hard drives and preserving your work. You know, like you have to remember, I started way back when, when hard drives like weren't reliable and they certainly didn't have a lot of space. So the idea that I could put my 26 years worth of work on the blockchain and just say, hey, you know, whether you like my work or not, here's my moment on earth and here's everything that I made. And you don't have that need to authenticate whether it's it's real or not, you know, because the blockchain just says, yes, it was minted by this wallet. We know this wallet was owned by Joshua Davis. It's definitely his works. You know, this idea of, of being able to preserve my work, authenticate that I was the creator of the work, and then this idea of it becoming sort of an estate that can pass through my family. Those aspects alone, I think, are why any artist would, 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 would want to embrace this technology.